Welcome to episode 527 of the Pittsburgh Nerd Podcast. I'm Sean. And I'm Ian, and this is the only podcast that says... You will give the people of Earth an ideal to strive towards. They will race behind you. They will stumble. They will fall. But in time, they will join you in the sun, Cal. In time, you will help them accomplish wonders. Nice. Yeah. Soups. A little, little Man of Steel action there. Maybe. I've been thinking about rewatching that. How are you, sir? Still fighting this cold. Still fighting. Fight the good fight, everybody. Hmm. That's awful. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah, that's right. the worst. I can imagine. Especially when you put on the mask. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. <clears throat> Especially when you're wearing a mask for long hours. Mm-hmm. It's, you can't get rid of it. Yeah, it's like you can just like drop the mask down and... Yeah, I can't cover my mouth. I just go yeah. into the mask. Like my shirt gets soaked. I'm it's sure. The worst. Yeah. So, there's that. Boom! <clears throat> Well, that sucks. It does. Yeah. Just awful. <laughs> well, we appreciate you fighting through it for the podcast. Yeah, just for this. Just for this. All right, first off, I want to apologize to everybody for, for posting the incorrect podcast on Monday. As uh, they say on the streets, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, I'll try not to make that mistake a second time. Um, but also, before we really get started, I do want to congratulate our, uh, our good friends uh, to the West uh, in that horrible city of Cincinnati, uh, the shining beacon in a city of awfulness, the, the History of Bad Ideas podcast. Uh, they are enjoying, uh, they, they have reached a milestone of 500 episodes this week. Nice. Yeah, so... Um, with tip of the hat to them, welcome to the 500 Club. Yeah. Um, you are also a, a testament to uh, enduring mediocrity, much as we are. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I shouldn't say that. They actually have sponsors and shit. Like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> we do not. No, we do not. So. No one's sponsoring us. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. Um, Except Manny Damon. Yeah, Matt, Matty Damon, you're you're at that that check you send every month. We thank you for. Yeah, it's more like a cease and desist letter that you are not. I am not your friend. I've never listened to your fucking show. My lawyers say it's awful. <coughs> friend of the show, Matty Damon. Um. So I was sick this week. I had, I had a bit of a throat issue, so I, I, I uh, took some time off from work and I uh, watched a couple of things. Okay, what'd you watch? I did. I watched um, the Outlaws. Okay. Uh, a a Happy Madison uh, production, mm. and it was meh. Okay. Just meh. I, I I can't say it was like fantastic. I didn't like you know. I enjoyed it I, I, for what it was. I, I wasn't like, you know, head over heels over it. Um, you know, some funny stuff. You know, Bronson's good. Uh-huh. Um, you know, it, it, it was just like, you know, meh. That's the best I can say. Yeah. Like, if you enjoy, like, that brand of humor, which I do, <coughs> you'll, you'll, you'll probably enjoy it. But, I mean, overall, I was just kind of like, yeah, this was just okay. Just okay. I'm trying to think what the other thing was I watched. I'm sure somebody out there would be like, yeah, you should have written it down. Um, I'm trying to think. I watched that, and there was something else I watched that was... I watched three things. I watched that. I watched something in the middle. And I watched Star Trek Beyond. There you did. Yeah, I like that movie. I like that movie a lot. 
interesting because I watched uh, more with Khan in it this week. The Star Trek in the Darkness. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think what the other thing was. It is going to drive me nuts. I can't remember if it was on Netflix. Because the, the Outlaws were on Netflix. So it's like... I don't know. I can't remember. I caught up on Deadliest Catch. Did you? I think I, I've watched every season. I stopped watching it after a while because it became like way too formulaic. Yeah. Like I hate saying that. Like it's like this. It's like it's like the formula that you you wanted. Like you enjoyed the formula initially, but then like after a while, it just becomes that thing. It's like, oh yeah, it's this again. You know? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I feel like it's probably more... More along the lines of, like, you know... Re, I mean, clearly it's reality TV. Like, you know, they're not scripting that shit. Yeah. But it just it seemed like... And I, I'm, I'm sure, you know... Maybe it's gotten better at it but I feel like it's just it's, it's one of those things where it's like you know like the same thing over and over every season <coughs> it didn't it doesn't bother me I, I watch the show yeah I mean the subject matter is fascinating to me uh, there's no doubt about that but like out, outside of that you watch The Witcher too I gotta catch up on that. Like, I, I I need to sit down, and I just need to watch it for starting over from season one. Cause like I got halfway through season two, and it wasn't that I wasn't enjoying it, but it was like there was a lot of shit I felt like I don't remember this. Right. You know. So I need to go back and like kind of like just watch it straight through. We All talked th- about the night agent, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that was good. That was a freaking. I feel like it was a documentary. Oh my God. I, I can't believe I can't remember. Oh, I did watch a documentary. Okay. Well, sort of. Okay. Uh, it's the um, the new Egyptian one. The Unknown. Oh, I remember what it was. Though. Okay, yeah, go ahead with, with, with what you were watching. Yeah, it's like the Unknown. Like the, I can't remember his name, but he's like the head archaeologist in Egypt. Yeah. And... Like, his big thing was, like, all these great finds, you know, Tutankhamun and everybody like that. Was, right. They were, like, discovered by English, and their shit was taken. Yeah. And he's, like, proud to be, like, an Egyptian. Yeah. Who's discovering his past. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And he's trained archaeologists. Right. Egyptian archaeologists. Right. To do their thing, you know. So, kind of, this documentary... It's about mm, I, I want to say an hour, but I swear it was a little bit over, but it followed him. Yeah. And he was going back to like the first dynasty. Yeah. Like he found this place, you know, where they were just starting to get good at mummification and stuff like yeah. that. So not just get good. It was primitive. Like they were just yeah. starting. They're just starting the process. Yeah. <coughs> and uh so, like I said, I watched that. And it also followed one of his students as well. Yeah. And, like, they were going to unknown tombs. They, you know. Yeah. Um, probably the problem is most of the tombs have been raided. Right. And it was interesting how they were describing it because the tomb shafts that go down, the ones that have limestone rock are usually the ones that they've never found. Right. The ones that have just sand. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Those are the ones that have been looted. Right. So, yeah. So, it was it was really interesting. I mean, really interesting. Yeah. So I watched, That's cool. I watched that. And, uh, <coughs> yeah, that was good. And then I started watching Expedition Unknown one night. 
Yeah. They started it one night and then. Yeah. Five episodes later. Yeah. My biggest thing with that Expedition Unknown was. He's taking a sip of dew. Yeah. Um, one thing I do like about it is they go into. One thing I don't, sorry, don't like about it is. From the past, I, I would watch these things and be like, so cool. Right. And then all of a sudden, like, they would always turn up to empty. empty. Yeah. Nothing. Capone's vault all yeah, over. Rarely. Yeah. It was like, yeah. yeah. It was like Capone's vault all over. Every, every show. And I'm like, uh. But this was actually, the ones I watched were actually really productive. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Um, so that was really good. And like, he's not afraid to do anything. This guy, yeah. Josh Gates. I mean, he's like, sort of like modern day Indiana Jones. Like, he, he, he's not afraid to dive or. Yeah. Cave dive or. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's. <coughs> crazy and um anyway he was something I didn't know it was weird because I watched that show and it said this is suggested next right and because I thought I didn't finish them but I guess I didn't it said expedition and I was like oh I didn't see them I must have skipped it you know right, in the yeah. new season and uh I can't remember the name of the country, but it's terrible to say, but it, it borders Egypt. Sudan, maybe? What, Syria? I think it's Sudan. Anyway, borders Egypt. And they had... It was really interesting because I just watched this whole thing on Egypt, and then now there's this. Right. Well, they, they conquered... <clears throat> well, Egyptians conquered them. Right. Because they were the ones that supplied all the gold. Right. So all the gold came from this country. Right? So Egypt was like, well, we're going to just... We're just going to take out the middle man. You know what I mean? Right. Thanks. We're just going to take out the middle man. Bless you, child. <laughs> kid's bringing in a fan. Yeah. Uh, it's very warm in this room. Yeah. <coughs> And we're going to conquer this. And we're going to do the gold thing. Right. So the people adopted their, you know. Yeah. I mean, they were, I think they were pretty decent with them. Egypt. Yeah. They adopted their stuff. And then when Egypt started, was starting to fall. I know this is like a stupid history lesson. But when Egypt was starting to fall, they were going away from their God. Right. But when they went to this place, I think I'm pretty sure it's in here. They went to this place. This place, because they conquered and stuff like that, adopted the old religion, right? Right. And they were powerful. In the, I mean, not powerful, but they believed in this religion. Yeah. And so when all the shit was going on in Egypt, they came in and just fucking wiped Egypt out. Right. Yeah. In the name of Osiris Ra. or yeah. something like that. Because that's what they believed in. Right. You know what I mean? They felt they, they won. Right. And so that's... Um, you're talking about Egyptian versus African American culture, right? Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And that's how you got the pharaohs in that dynasty, right? For I don't know how many dynasties, but right. But it was interesting. So yeah. anyway, they found they found they had their own pyramids. Yeah. They have more pyramids than Egypt. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so they were diving into the first king's pyramid, and the problem was is it was so close to the Nile, not in Egypt, but in yeah. Samaria? I can't remember. Anyway, um, all the, everything was flooded inside. Yeah. So you go down this thing, and all it is is water. Now, right. you went down in, you went through one chamber, two chamber, and then the third chamber was right. the king. Right. And so they, instead of wearing tanks, like they didn't want to wear tanks inside. Right, because if the, if the tank hit the side of the thing, they could collapse. Right, yeah. It was brittle. Yeah. And so they had air hoses connected to fucking suits. Ooh, wow. Yeah, dude, it was yeah. like, fuck. And, Josh, and Gates was like, yeah, I'll do it. But he was scared <laughs> shitless, yeah. dude. Like, oh, he sure. was scared. I mean, like, yeah. and so not only was, like, they had these air hoses, 
but it was pitch black. I mean, it was like there's so much silt. Anything you kicked up, anything. The water was murky. You couldn't. You could barely right. see your hand. Plus, you're in a cave. Any, like you're, there's no light to begin with. No. Yeah. Right. So they tied rope. They have rope sections. Right. That you grab onto. Now you can see the rope if you have the rope. Like it, it was like yellow nylon cord. Yeah. And you could see the rope in your hand with your light on. Right. But you couldn't see any further than that. Right. And there's this one section where you have to leave the rope. Yeah. No, really. Yeah. And reach for this cinder block, and that's where the other rope is. And yeah. that connects you from... The yellow rope gets you to the first chamber, you have to go to the cinder block, get to the second chamber, get through the second chamber. And yeah. Then, yeah. Fucking... It was crazy. Yeah. And so they... Th- the reason they were doing all this is because they found the first pyramid. And, yeah. And that is where this all started. Right. You know. <clears throat> so, what they did was inside there was a, a tomb with a flat top and they weren't sure if it was a tomb or not. Right. They didn't, they didn't know if it was like a sacrificial thing. But it was actually a tomb. Yeah. But it was also buried underwater. Right. You can see around it, and there was a crack in the top of the thing. Yeah. So you can get into it. But that tells you that the cave had collapsed even further. Right. So what they did was they took buckets, like, not buckets. It's sort of like a bucket, but it's more malleable. And they took it in, and they were just putting shit in buckets. And then they were taking the rope, and they did a chain all the way out. And they were just taking, like, 20 buckets out. And they had a tent and they had sifters going in there. Right. So the inter- all in all, da, 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 da. so the interesting thing about, about it thing is all this gold they were finding, like all this gold, yeah, like everywhere. And then they found his. I don't know if it's jade or whatever, but it's the person that helps them in the afterlife. It's a it's supposedly a mimic. Yeah. God I, of yeah. them, but it's like this big. I can't yeah. remember the name of it. <clears throat> anyway. Yeah. So, they found that, and then they went back in for the final, well, the final time they did go in for him. They were trying to get down to the body, if there was a body in there. Right. And they pulled out a uh, a toe cap, like a gold toe cap. Yeah. <coughs> it looked like something was inside, and sure enough, it was a metatarsal inside. Oh, wow. So, it proved that that, that was the it's king, and yeah. the skull was probably still in there. Right. So it was a really cool episode. Like, yeah. I dig that kind of shit. Yeah. I mean, like, just because it's real Indiana Jones type of stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. So that was cool. And the only thing from that other show that they really found, I mean, they found some a lot of stuff. They found some Egyptians. I mean, like, mummies and stuff like that. Yeah. Some were from the first dynasty. So, I mean, some of them were just not yeah. mummified well. But they found, I can't remember what they called that either, just because it's not in my vocabulary. Um... But it's like, it's um, a scroll, I guess on, not paper, but papyrus. Papyrus. They found a whole, thank you. They found a whole papyrus of the Book of the Dead. Oh, wow. No, I, I'm yeah, selling yeah, you. I, I understand. In Egypt. Yeah. And nobody opened that. Huh? Nobody opened that. No. Here, Let so, me read from it, please. They, uh, they please. found, they found it. Yeah. And like, it, like they took it out, and they, they was so happy. It wasn't the main archaeologist; it was right. his apprentice that found the right. found the scroll. And uh, so, anyway, like it was like they were like baby in this fucking. Oh, I'm sure. It's like, yeah, it's like no, literally, it's like it was yeah. wrapped about this big, but it was probably yeah. about this big. So I guess they took it back to Egypt, the museums, and they they have to humidify. There's process. Oh yeah, it takes like weeks. Yeah. But they humidify it and everything like that. Right. And so they got it, and they're like delicately with like a blunt knife blade, like like yeah. a like a like a butter knife almost. Yeah, like trying to get underneath it. And, yeah, but yeah. they were un- they had this long t- and they started to unroll it. Yeah. Right. It was it was mint. Yeah. I mean, it was perfect. Yeah. I mean, like there was no coloration change. Yeah. It's, I mean, this is something that's been buried for, what, four, th- 5,000 years? Yeah. And, like, there was no deterioration. 
It's crazy. I mean, right. like the colors, the black and the white and the red. And well, probably being underground like that, that, that deep, there's no humidity Ooh. to attack it. You know, it's in a relatively cool situation. You know, it's not going to... Yeah. You know, so, yeah, I can see where that would be. I thought it was so Well-preserved cool. because of that. It was just so well-preserved. Yeah. I mean, you could see. It, it was... It's like... You know, you always see, like, the sides of pyramids or the inside of pyramids of, you know, or the hieroglyphs, the hieroglyphs yeah. and the color that was once there. And they yeah. always say, you know, the top of the Great Pyramid was gold and inside yeah. the walls were gold and yeah. blah, blah, blah. That's all gone. It's all deteriorated time. Right. But this was, like, something out of time that was just perfectly. Yeah. You know, it was perfect. Yeah. It was crazy. Sorry, I went on a rant about no, that. Okay. It was a really interesting show. Cool. Glad you enjoyed Both it. shows were good. Um, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I was like, don't read that. Yeah. <laughs> don't read Book of the Dead. Yeah, we, we got enough problems. We don't need this. Yeah. The other thing I watched... Which is probably way more interesting than what I watched. Not really, no. Um, it was an animated movie called The Doom That Came to Gotham. Okay. Now, here's what's interesting about this. <coughs> it takes place in, like, 1925. Mm. And it's, like, a cross between, like, Batman and, um... Oh. Oh, I can't believe I can't think of the dude's name now. Um, Lovecraft. H.P. Lovecraft? H.P. Lovecraft, yeah. Okay. Like, there's a lot of, like, Cthulhu. Yeah. Like, a lot of the villains are... Like, there's no Joker in this, but, like, there's a lot, like... Like, Poison Ivy and... Like, Mr. Freeze and... Like, even, like, Raza Ghoul... Like they're all like kind of Cthulhu based villains, uh-huh. you know, and they're they're trying to open a a dimensional doorway. You know, it it was a it's very interesting. I'm not going to do it any justice because I'm trying to describe it because I don't want to like ruin it because I like you to watch it. Mm-hmm. I think you'll dig it. One because it's even though it's animated, it's a period piece, <coughs> but also just too like it's kind of freaky. Yeah, like. I was kind of surprised, like, it went to some, like, I thought, ah, I, and I heard, like, like, it was, like, rated R, I believe. And I thought, like, how, how, how dark can this get? And it got pretty fucking dark. Yeah. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. You know, and, uh, it, it, it was actually very, very good. I enjoyed the hell out of that. Like, even, like, like it, at the ending, I was like, I just went with it because it was, like, so... H.P. Lovecraft. Like, yeah, you're just yeah. like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. That would happen. Yeah, I get that. So, I highly recommend Batman, The Doom That Came to Gotham. But only if you're into, like, that type of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Like, if you're not, then it's not worth your time. But if you do dig, like, if you read H.P. Lovecraft at some point, if you know, you're into, like, stuff like that... It's it's well worth a watch because it, it it's a kind of an interesting take on Batman and like everything that is in that universe. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, I, I watched that, and then I watched um just the first four episodes today. I I watched of uh. It's a show on Netflix called Quarterback. Okay. And it's it's an Omaha production, which is Peyton Manning's production company. Mm. And so he's teamed with the NFL Films and Netflix to do this show. And it's a behind-the-scenes look throughout the entire season of Patrick Mahomes, Kirk Cousins, and Marcus Mariota. Okay. And... <coughs> I'm a guy, like I've talked about before, like I like like hard knocks because it's like gives you that behind the scene look at things and this is a very behind the scenes look and I'm sure it's not like overexposure but like 
to hear the because there are three different types of quarterbacks. There are three different places in their careers, and there are three different levels of quarterback. Like Patrick Mahomes is elite, one of the greatest who's ever played the game. Like even at the age of twenty-seven, he's one of the greatest who's ever played the game. There's not a doubt in my mind about that. Kirk Cousins is a guy who he puts up great regular season stats, and if you get him in a situation where he he can play well in the playoffs. He could probably get you to a Super Bowl and maybe win it. Like he's, he's, he's very Joe Flacco-ish to me. Mm. And then Marcus Mariota is like a guy like... like He was in Atlanta as like, you know, a place setting. Like, you're not here to be the franchise quarterback. We're, we're, we're just kind of got you here because we think Desmond Ritter is our future. Mm. And so it's like an interesting look at these these three guys and how, the, like how they do things and how, like... Preparation for a game from every aspect, like the physical, mental, like the stuff that they do, like outside of like the practice facility, as far as like, you know, like Kirk Cousins has his own chiropractor team that comes to his house. You know, uh, Mahomes does a workout with a guy like for, for strength and train and, and agility and like. It, it, it was a very fascinating look into, like, like it's not just go to practice and show up on Sundays. It, it's it's much, much more than that. It, it was a very, at least through the first four episodes, it's been a very interesting kind of glimpse into what, and what may be the most demanding position in all of sports. It's a fascinating look into what it takes to handle that pressure. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, quarterbacks get too much of the 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 kudos, and they get too much of the blame. Yeah. And but at the same time, it, it's the quarterback is the nerve center of the offense. Yeah. You know he and it so it again. If you're into football, <coughs> like, I highly recommend this because it's one of those things where it's like you gain a deeper appreciation for even a bad quarterback. Marcus Mariota is not a good quarterback. But the things that he does and, like, the way he works, like, it makes you think, like, man, like, I, this guy works so fucking hard. Yeah. Like, and he just... He's not good enough. Yeah. You know? Like, and meanwhile, you get, like, I, I, I used to hate, like, I I even watched an interview. Michael Vick was talking to um, Jim Mora Jr., his head coach when he was in Atlanta. And Jim Mora asked him, every week we used to give you a DVD with, like, the game plan and the, the cut-ups and everything that, you know, every week we gave you a DVD. Did you ever watch it? He's like, no, I had a collection in the back of my back seat of my car. I used to get in my car, I'd throw it in the back seat, I'd never look at it. And it's like, he played strictly on, he, he, there was zero preparation, it was strictly athletic ability for him. Yeah. Like, back in that, back, especially back then. Yeah. Like, I think after he got out of prison, and he had his run with the Eagles, I think he was more game plan oriented. But back then, with, with Atlanta, it was like, I'll figure it out, I'll just fucking throw the ball or I'll run. Yeah. You know? And so, like, it is, it's very interesting to me to see like like how the best in the game, Patrick Mahomes, and how a guy who's like just a meh quarterback and, and Marcus Mariota, who's still don't get me wrong, a far more phenomenal athlete than, than I'll ever be. Like <coughs> how their preparation isn't all that dissimilar. Yeah. You know, they do things differently, but it's like, you know, this guy's not taking shortcuts, he's not not putting in the work. He's you know he is putting in the work. It's just you know bad situations, not enough talent. Where the you know Patrick Mahomes, all the talent in the world does things that you've never seen any other quarterback ever do. Yeah. You know, and on top of it all, the the mindset he has for the game and the way he sees the game. You know, it, it it's a very fascinating thing there. I enjoyed the hell out of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, and I mean what's 
what's even more interesting is like I'm watching it and I'm like I'm like and I know somebody's gonna be like oh football you know like I remember like our play calls when I played high school <coughs> yeah and like what we called then compared to what they call now like even is a it's it's amazing like I could not follow it but like like I even remember I was watching it was the World League of American Football their first year mm-hmm. and they had great Gatsby's ghost yeah. and they, they had the coaches mic'd mm-hmm. and Mouse Davis was one of the coaches and Mouse Davis was the innovator of the run and shoot offense right we ran a run and shoot offense <laughs> my last year of high school <laughs> and uh like their play calls were similar to what I was running in high school. Okay. Like I could actually like listen to those play calls and be like, okay, yeah, I know what they're running. I get that. Where nowadays, like the shit that they call, I'm like, I have no fucking clue what this is. Wow. You know. So I think we're going to uh, take a moment. Oh no, air's clear. Okay. <laughs> Thank God the fans blowing that way. <laughs> So, yeah, I, I enjoyed the hell out of that, and I'd, I'd recommend it to anybody who, who likes football. Like, if, yeah. you, if, you, if you're a football junkie, this is definitely worth a list, a, a watch. Yeah. Yeah, so. Cool. Yeah. <coughs> so. Strange New Worlds. Yeah, watch Strange New Worlds. That was fantastic. You can't, like, it's becoming this odd thing of like, you can't talk about that show. Like, like every episode is fantastic. Yeah, it's weird. Like, it is. It's, and, and like, it's like this weird thing of like, I. Did you I, get choked up at that point? Uh huh. At one point, did you ever get choked up? Oh, yeah. When the conversation between Spock and his mother? Yeah. That was like, oh my God. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was, uh, and that was brewing. It was. Like, 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 the whole episode. Yeah. You know, they, it was good how they kept pointing it out, sort of. But, yeah, that was brewing the whole time. But it's, what's interesting about it to me is, like, it's like, how do you get from this version of Spock to the Spock we know? Yeah. And this is how. Yeah. Like, this moment helps educate him and so when by the time Kirk does come he's more accepting of like Kirk's style yeah yeah because he understands it a little bit from the human aspect yeah you know like it, it, it is it, it but yeah like that moment between him and his mom where he's just like I I'm an asshole yeah you know and I am really sorry that I just completely, like, never took into account the shit that you went through for me. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't know why the fuck you do it. It ain't worth it, you know? Yeah. But, it, yeah, it was it was fascinating. <laughs> fascinating. <laughs> it was fascinating to watch that episode and, like... In the Christine Chapel aspect of it, like, I, I like that. Yeah. Like... And then, like, the end, like, you know, that was like, oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm here for that. Yeah. <coughs> you get your pawn far or then there's Spock. <laughs> I like the uh, aspects of when he was human. Yeah. Like, his reaction to bacon was his <coughs> therapy. <coughs> yeah. I know. And just, I'm always hungry. And, yeah. You know what I mean? It was good. Jeez. <clears throat> yeah, so th- there was a lot of good in that episode. and I liked it a lot. And I, again, like, I, I don't understand how this show can be this good. Yeah. <clears throat> oh 
like I, it, it it's like this odd thing like I don't I just don't I can't wrap my head around it like it's and it's not just a Star Trek show don't don't I, I mean but it's just it's like There are through lines, like, it's not, a, it's episodic, so, like, you can watch a single episode without having watched any other. <coughs> so, Ian was After just... After the lung transplant. Yeah, he was just gagging on his phlegm there. <laughs> um, anyway. Anyway, I, I, was, I was trying to say, like, it's, it's tough when you have a show that, like, there hasn't been a stinker. Nah. You know what I mean? Like, every episode, like, exceeds expectations. Even when I, like, look at an episode, I go, oh, here we go. This old chestnut. Mm-hmm. Like, the time travel episode. Like, I thought, oh, here we go. Yeah, and so did I. Same, and, same thing. Yeah. Phenomenal episode. You know, um, so it, it, it's, but it's a show that, like, even though it's episodic and you can watch it without having watched any other episode, there are through lines of stories that are taking place there, like with Spock and Chapel. Yeah. You know, um, little, little things like that that you're like, you're like, oh, okay, that's, uh, that's interesting. You know, you know, Leon with, like, her dealing with her, her past. Yeah. Like, who, who she is. Um, like, I'm waiting, like, you know, you know there's going to be a Gorn episode at some point that's going to be like, oh, shit. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. And also, like, you know, you just, like, I don't know, it just, it's, it's such a good show, you know, and mm-hmm. it has no right to be this, this fucking good. <laughs> like, it doesn't, like, I mean, and it's, I'm so happy it is, like, it's so good, my, I'm glad Ensign Mount has, like, a, a platform to, like, just display his skills on, and it's just a fantastic show, and I can't, I, like, I feel goofy every week, like, just, like, blowing it like we do. Like, we just, like, you know, <laughs> slobber all over it. Yeah. But it's just, it's that good of a show. Yeah, it is. Quite enjoy the show. Yeah. And I watched uh, another episode of The Dead. Yeah, how was that? It was good. Yeah. Yeah, there was this one part where... So the zombies are kind of evolving, and we all knew this. Yeah. You know, they're kind of doing their own thing. Right. And, uh... But there was a one part that was almost like the thing. Yeah. It was badass. Okay. Yeah, I was like, dude, that's wicked. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like a a creature effect-wise. Yeah. That I really liked. But all in all, the episode was just pretty good. Good. So I enjoyed that. I swear I watch something else, but I can't. Well, we need to enjoy this shit while we can because the Screen Actors Guild went on strike. <coughs> yeah. And, you know, that along with the Writers Guild being on strike, like, you know, ain't shit being made now. They'll find some kind of. Something. Well, I hope, like, but, like, it's like this funny thing of, like, people bitch. Oh, those actors, they make enough money. And the top dogs, you're right, but like a strike like this is never about the top dogs. It's always about the the lower one third. Mm -hmm. And like one of the things that they've brought up that I've I've heard them talk about, and this is like a legitimate, like, that's bullshit, Mm -hmm. is what they, what the production companies want to do is they want to bring you in as like a background actor. They want to do a full body scan of you, pay you for one day's work, and then use that body scan in perpetuity without ever having to pay you again. Yeah, that's fucked up. Yeah. And that's what, like, they're fighting. Like, they're fighting stuff like that. The use of, of AI, the use of, um, also, like, you know, residuals based upon, like, you know, streaming rights. Yeah. Like, it's one thing, like, it's an odd thing, like, where you, like, you get a residual for a movie, like, when it shows on, like, the Hallmark Channel, or if it shows on, 
on A and E or or whatever. Like you know, shows on HBO. You get you get residuals for that. But like for streaming, that's like a the wild <laughs> west when it comes to like residuals. Like how how do you get like you don't get a residual check for like if I watch a movie that you're in and it gets watched a thousand times on Netflix, but you know, that's not coming back to you. Yeah. But yet that movie was technically played a thousand times. Yeah. So that's another thing you have to figure out. Like with the Writers Guild, it's kind of the same thing. Like, they, like there's a lot of things like I I've read about it. Like it's not about like a lot of it is about streaming services and residuals from streaming services. It's also about like um the way shows are being produced that writers are being locked out of. Okay. But they're like I can't remember what it's called, but it's like they put, they have this like thing where it's like, okay, we're gonna have you write ten episodes of a show, and that show never gets picked up, so you never get paid for writing those ten episodes. Right. You know, it's stuff like that. Like, there's a lot of like odd things that like these two unions and are fighting for, but and it's like that makes sense because like it's not the Tom Cruises of the world that need <coughs> the help. It's like the background actors, it's the little guy, right? You know, so like I hope this gets worked out. But I mean, like, like the stuff that it's like amazing. Like, like that whole thing, like with like, yeah, we're just gonna scan you, and then we're gonna use that image in perpetuity forever. Yeah, you get paid for it once. Yeah, what? Like, like I think, like I'm fairly certain. I know they had to ask for permission for the guy who played Grand Moff Tarkin. Like when they when they did Rogue One, they had to ask permission to be able to use his likeness. Right. And I'm pretty sure the family got money for that. I think it was the same with Carrie Fisher, because like they were, you know they were both I mean, clearly passed away, but like to use their likeness in that in that in in that moment. I think there had to be, at that time at least, like, you know, we need permission to be able to do this, and then, you know, this is how much we'll pay the family. Plus, you also have to pay the actor who stood in. Yeah. You know I mean? Like, there's a, a lot that went into that. So it's like... But that's in, a, like, a, a major role. Like, what they're talking about is, like, okay, I scan you. I'm going to pay you one day's pay. And I can take that image that I scanned, and I can use you in the background of a crowded sidewalk. You know, I can use you in a restaurant. I can, you know, so I don't have to pay extras to be there. Yeah. I can just use your image and create and computer generate that and have you doing whatever I want you to do. And so it's only the, the two actors who are actually working in the space, and the rest of it's empty because I don't need extras for that. Yeah. No, I get it. Yeah. That's insanity. <laughs> and I mean, like, the funny thing is, is like, me as somebody who's not even a working actor, I look at that and, and go, that, that's not fair at all. Yeah. So how, like, why would you as a production company, as, a, as one of these major studios, be like, that seems fair to me. <laughs> you got paid once. Yeah. Really? Yeah. That's fucked up. It is. It's messed up. So yeah, I mean that that's uh like I'm not gonna sit here and be like, you know, I'm not pro union or anti union, but like, you know, I think clearly like a lot of the things that they are fighting for like, it makes sense. Like I understand why. Cause it's it's not affecting the top, it's not affecting Chris <laughs> Pratt or Ryan Reynolds, but it is affecting, like, the little guy in Hollywood who relies on that, whatever that base pay is for doing a day's work yeah, yeah. On, on a set. Yeah. You know. Well, hopefully they'll come to some kind of agreement. 
I, I hope so. I, I, I certainly hope so. But like the other side of that though is that I hated this. Like one of one of the studio heads or was like, yeah, we'll we'll just you know wait until they we'll wait a month until they can't you know afford their their rent or or their mortgage. And then Ron Perlman, an actor I love and respect, basically threatened. Like, yeah, there's more than one way to lose a house. Wow. Yeah, I'm like, you're both wrong. <laughs> you know, like, let's keep it civil. Yeah, yeah. You know. In all honesty, Ron, I don't think you're going to lose your house anytime soon. Yeah. You know. I'm sure you've been well compensated over the years. <clears throat> right. So. That was that. And, uh. I found this interesting as well. Uh, this week, Bob Iger. I had to face the music pairing with, with shareholders. And he was talking about, um, particularly about Marvel, Marvel and Pixar, and how Marvel movies aren't making the type of money they're expecting. Mm-hmm. And I don't think Marvel's had a dud of a movie yet. But I think like there's this expectation, for whatever reason, that every Marvel movie should make a billion dollars. Right. And no, they shouldn't. I think some have, like... I don't think Eternals did that well, but I think Eternals also came out near the end of the pandemic. But I mean, like, you look at, like, okay, Spider-Man... No Way Home... Like that, exceed. Like I mean, that that was a billion dollar movie. But it was a billion dollar movie because you were like, you did something amazing. Yeah. Like that was, you know, with the whole multiverse thing and and the di- like. The thing that drove people to the theaters was the three Spider Mans. Yeah. Like you know that that was what drove people to theaters, and not like. It, it, you know, it, it exceeded what a normal Spider-Man movie would do it, it, because it was like a, this event movie. It was an event. Movie. It was an event movie, but <clears throat> like Doctor Strange and Ant-Man after that don't do a billion dollars, and it's like, well, they're failures. Well, no, they're no, not. They weren't. They still made a ton of money, and they were good movies. And they were good movies. Yeah, yeah. It, it's just you're setting an absurdly high standard. Like Ant-Man's a secondary level character. Well, they all. I yeah, mean, and now in this universe, now yeah, but like even like in the movies, like <coughs> I think if you look at the first two Ant Man movies, they didn't make a ton of money. Mm-mm. No, it was kind of like when the Ant movies, Ant Man movies came out, they were kind of a relief. Like, yeah, get away from let's get away from you right know, this and, heaviness. Yeah, of it, you know. And even though this the third one was kind of heavy, it was still very light. Yeah. You know, so it's like this odd thing of like, Ant-Man movies don't do a billion dollars. Doctor Strange movies aren't going to do a billion dollars. Right. Like, they're just not. That, you know... <coughs> so you've got to set your... Your... Your, your horizon for, for like that. that. Your expectations have to be lower. It, it's like, but it's like this thing of like, well, Mar- if a Marvel movie doesn't do a billion dollars, it's a failure. Well, no, it's not. Look at the movie. Right. What's going on? What is it? You know, Guardians is a success because it's an event movie. It's the third chapter of this very successful franchise within a franchise. Right. You know, and... But, like, the, their thinking is, like... Kevin, or Bob Iger feels that the, the waters have been diluted because of Disney+. Plus. <clears throat> and, and I would say this like I think you're right to a certain extent 
But at the same time, I, I think the Disney Plus option, the, the TV show option, allows you to take a character that you really wouldn't focus a movie on yeah. and expand on that character. Right. Like, you would not have focused a movie on She-Hulk. Mm. At all. Like, you wouldn't have focused a movie on Hawkeye as much as I would have wanted you to. Yeah. Be a good movie. It would be. It would have been. But, like... In that spy... Yeah. yeah. Like, Falcon and the Winter Soldier was a very, very good show. You know? But I wouldn't make a movie with Falcon in it. I'm just kidding. Yeah, well, they are now. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Loki was a... Like, Loki had to be done as a show. Yeah. Like, you couldn't tell that story. You couldn't set up the multiverse and everything else that comes with it without it being a TV show. So, like, I feel like there is... <coughs> Yes, there is a dilution, but at the same time, you can't blame it on on that because I feel like, for the most part, the movies that you've released since Endgame haven't been of that caliber. Yeah, they haven't been on that adventure scale. No. Closest thing you have to that is probably Spider-Man. Yeah. And that's not even right on that same level. No. But it was a massive event that people came out and were like, could not wait to see. Well, it was after COVID. The stars aligned. They had three Peter Parkers. They brought back all the old villains. Right. I mean, like, it was... Honestly, I really don't know how you can do much better than that. Right. Right. I mean, like... It was perfect timing. You're absolutely right. I mean, the third... The third movie was better than the Mysterio one. Yeah. Um, Although I enjoyed Mysterio. Right. Seeing that look, you know, uh, and I get the story, and it was a good, I mean, it was a good story, right? But nothing compares to No Way Home. No, not even close. No, I mean that was just, it was perfect timing. It was a perfect alignment of. It was just smart. Yeah, that's all I can say. Right, I don't think it was smart. I think it was lucky. I think again, like you said, like it was coming out of COVID. Mm. It was a major event movie because of everything that was going on with it. Yeah. You know, like, so yeah, I mean, it, it, but like, you look at everything before that and after that. Yeah. I mean, Black Widow is a great movie. Well, it was. But I mean, I didn't expect that to make a billion dollars. No. Not at all. No. You know, so it's, it's just, it's, it's a weird thing of like, you know, Shang-Chi. It's a very good movie. I enjoyed the hell out of it. Right. It's not a billion dollar franchise. Yet. No. no. These are just pieces of the puzzle. Yeah. Like, so it's like this odd thing of like, I, I, I understand his point. I think the only reason Iron Man did well was because of Robert Downey Jr. To be honest I, with you. I think that, and I, the third one. I, I, I think that, and I, I think it was like, It was just that good of a movie. Like I, I'm willing to bet its opening weekend wasn't as great. Like it did well opening weekend, but I'm sure that was a movie that made probably made more money as it went as it went because of word of mouth. Yeah. Like that. Like there are movies that do that. Like it opened well because comic book nerds were going to show out. Like no matter what, mm. especially like when you're saying like this is Marvel's first real movie. Yeah. Marvel owns this. Marvel produced this. This is this isn't. 20th Century Fox or you know this was a Marvel movie right and then you throw in the basically it was like I'm not going to tell you what happens but stay for the end sit through the trip sit through the uh, the yeah, credits that's how we started all that yeah I mean there the, the, I mean that is one of the great Holy shit moments in all of cinema, in my opinion. Yeah. Like, because I didn't know, like, I knew, like, yeah, if you stay for the, stay through the credits, there's something at the end. I don't know what it is. And I stay through the credits, and you get that, you know, you know, I'd like to talk to you about the Avengers initiative. And you're just like, what did he just, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Like, I just sit there for a second and be like, First off, that Samuel Jackson is Nick Fury. Okay, 
Okay, that's that's computing. Okay, yeah. And he just said the word Avengers. Yeah. Like, never in my wildest dream did I ever think I'd hear those words in a movie theater. <coughs> you know, like, in that context. <coughs> like, it, it, it was like, oh, wow. And then, like, to have Downey Jr. show up at the end of the Hulk movie, which came out later that year, yeah. it was like, it's possible. You can do this. Yeah. This, this you know, I mean, like, though... Those, they laid those pieces right. They did. And, like, those building blocks were important because it was, like... Like, even, like, the stupid stuff, like, when you get to Iron Man 2 and it's, like, you know... He's like, yeah, give me that right there. And he's like, and, he, and Colson hands Tony the Iron Man shield. He's like, you know what this is? Like, yeah, yeah, I need it right here. <laughs> Like, it was like, uh, okay, there's an Easter egg for Cap Shield. Like, <coughs> where are we, like, <coughs> it was stuff like that. When you hear, like, when you heard Shield, even in here, just hearing Shield for the first time was like, wow, okay, yeah. yeah. And I mean, so, I mean, there was, like, so much to that, that first Iron Man movie that, like, like, for you and I, were just was just massive, but like there are people who are like, oh yeah, I like Marvel movies. Have no fucking clue what the comic books are about. Yeah, you know, so they they, they miss that aspect of it, but they love the movies because they're fun to watch. Yeah, and the way they kind of dealt with Bucky. Yeah, throughout the Cap series, the introduction, the f- the fall of Bucky. Yeah, redemption of Bucky. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I thought that was a good storyline within. Yeah. That movie, they carry it on to other movies. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I can't remember what movie it was, but at the end, remember when Bucky was in Wakanda? Oh, yeah. That was at the end of Black Panther. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because at the end of Civil War, Cap takes him to Wakanda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the, at the, but at the end of Black Panther, that's when uh, he comes down and he gives him the arm. Yeah. Yeah. The White Wolf. Yeah, I mean, but and there was so much of that going yeah. on, that it just that connection. It made you almost want to go to the movie just to see the fucking after credits. Yeah, because it was being set up so well that, you know, we have Iron Man, we have Thor, we have Hulk, we have Cap. Where's this all leading? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. What's the next? What's the next? Post movie clip that we're going to see that's going to connect this to this to this to this. To this. And I feel like the, the one thing, and I, <coughs> and I understand why Wheaton did it, but the one thing that you're missing is that connective tissue, which was Colston. Yeah. Colston was the guy showing up and was like, I ah, hear you want to take a look at the Tesseract? Yeah. You know, to, uh, you know, it, it, like stuff like that. Like, he was the guy who was kind of just showing up in places and setting, almost setting things up. Right. In lieu of a Nick Fury. And I feel like, Again, I understand why why Wheaton killed him off and why, you know, he was never really brought back even though, like, there is an entire, like, six seasons of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which is all about that. Yeah. There... I feel like it would have been, like, very, very important to have that connective tissue going forward. No, I mean they've tried doing it a little bit. Like, I mean, you saw some of that at the end, the, the end credits of uh, of Shang Chi. But there's not enough of it, right? Like, but I mean, but you need that that one character who is your 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 thread throughout. Yeah, and I think I don't know. I, I don't know. I can't remember from the first, but it just seems like there was a movie like every six months or a year. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And I feel like we're sort of getting that this time, but not. Like you know, when did Shang Chi come out? Yeah, it's been a couple of years. Yeah. So I mean, like, what's connecting now? Do you know right. what I mean? Like, like yeah, you haven't heard anything about the rings since. Nah. But also, like. People constantly are saying, like, you know, when the Eternals came out, nobody's addressed the the Titan that was rising up out of the ocean that's that's 
calcified. Right. You know, like that. No, no series or, or movie has addressed that yet. <laughs> right. You know, which is interesting to think about. Like you'd think, like that would be like you know, front page news. Mm-hmm. Like, no. so like there's odd things that like they that you're right. Like they at the end of Shang Chi, they not make from those, the Daily Bugle. It's not. Yeah. <laughs> Like that you, in the end of Shang Chi, like you, they talked about, like wow, those rings are sending a signal we don't know to where, and you think like somebody will be talking about that still. Yeah. Like, at some point, someone will be like, "Oh, by the way, there's these rings I should probably tell you about." Uh, yeah, it seemed like Fury would have his foot in that something. Yeah. Yes. Like while you've been up on Saber, by the way, something's communicating with something in deep space. Yeah. So there, are, I mean, there are like oddball threads that they've kind of like just dropped. It's like something. a life alert for Galactus. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and nobody's figured that out yet. No, no, we have to wait for Reed Richards to show up yeah, to figure it out. Yeah. Oh, by the way, those rings—they're you know, communicating with something. Do you think they're going to bring Surfer back into it? I, yeah. I, if oh, you, if that'd you, be a great like end cutscene. If you do Galactus, you have to do Surfer. Yeah, you have to. You have to. Like that's you, you. You can't work around that. He he has to be the herald of Galactus. Yeah. You know, I mean that that's just the way it has to be. Like. I mean, the only saving grace is, like, I know when Marvel does this, it's not going to be a giant cloud. Yeah. You know. No, you're going to see it why. Yeah. Yeah, that, that cloud was terrible. That was awful. It was. And thinking back on it, too, even the scene where they got Doom. <coughs> I mean, it was cool what they were doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? But the problem I had with that was like, it just, I felt like I was on the set of Andy Griffith. Do you know what I mean? Like, it felt settish. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, some of the scenes were not, but that scene in particular, some of those scenes in the street or on the bridge, or Grim on the telephone booth. Yeah. Like, it was just... I mean, I like kind of like what they did with Doom. I get the whole, you know. Yeah. I get that whole thing. It's kind of classic what they would do in the books. You know? Yeah. That's the only redemption. But uh, it just felt like when you watched Endgame, you felt like you're in New York. Yeah. Or, I'm sorry, Avengers. The yeah. first Avengers movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you felt like you were in New York. You know, it was filmed in Cleveland. Yeah. You felt like you, you were in New, New York. York. And a lot of what they do now, they film in Georgia. Yeah. But you're right. You feel like you're in New York. I did. Yeah. You know. Especially how Cap was talking to the cops. Yeah. You know. Oh, yeah. I love when Cap goes straight, straight Brooklyn. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's cool. Like, it changes. Like, his voice changes. Yeah. Like, he becomes a New Yorker again. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, every time he does it in the movies, he becomes, you know, yeah. Brooklyn. Yeah. Like, when he was talking to Spidey. Hey, kid, where are you from? You know? Yeah. And he goes, oh, Brooklyn. Me. Well, and he also has a head drop. Like, yeah. it's like, great. he's like, hey, kid, where are you from? He's like, Queens. And he's trying to hold up the thing. And he's like, and he drops his head. He's like, Brooklyn. You know? Yeah, I get that. You know? Yeah, it's like I don't know. I also love, but the, the great and thing about that scene, like with the cops in the first Avengers movie, is like you know he's giving the instruction to the cops, like who the fuck are you? And, and that's exactly them. what they would say. Yeah, and then he rips off an alien's head, and he's like, okay, yeah, we need to set up a. Bur- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna take Captain America's advice. Yeah. Fucking Tackleberry, fucking yeah, assaulting Captain America. <laughs> Tackleberry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you see these guys. Yeah. They're like out of this world. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you question that. I mean, I guess you have to in a sense, but it's classic. If know? I had the money I was going to buy for you, I saw this online. 
it was a a, a shirt for the Blue Oyster. Mm-hmm. It's it, it had like the sign, it had the address, and underneath it said, "It's okay to enter through the back door." Nice. <laughs> it's like, oh, I gotta get that for Ian. But I just done a, I just nice. <laughs> anyway, anyway, but yeah, I mean, those Avenger movies were. They were good. I mean, I... The first one was great. It was. I thought there were parts of the second that were really good. Yeah. And then the third one. They were good. But I mean, like... Yeah. Yeah, I, they could have done so, so much better with Ultron. Yeah. It was a big disappointment. It was. I mean, you just waited for Spader to speak. Yeah. Waited for him. Every time he opened his mouth, you were so fucking tuned in. Yeah. Well, I agree. Every time. Yeah. Didn't matter. I don't care what he said. He could have said hi. You were still yeah. like, oh shit. Because that was Ultra. Yeah. They just wasted him. I felt. Not completely. But. I. I the, the holes that that. The, the problems that movie has. Like it's it's just that thing of like Marvel was forcing too much into it to set up the rest of the universe instead of letting Joss Wheaton make his movie. Yeah. And I feel like Marvel kinda learned their lesson from that. Yeah. Because they've let James Gunn just make his movie. Yeah. You know, like the first The first Guardians movie tied in because of like the Infinity Stone and Thanos was involved. That was like your first real introduction to Thanos as a as a character outside of just a cameo. You know, <coughs> Lee, Lee Pace just killing it. But the second movie had no connection to anything. You could watch that separately without... Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it really doesn't tie into anything. And neither did the third. Yeah. So... Oh, really? Yeah, but I mean, like that's that's the thing with that. that it's almost like they said, like, well, let's just let James Gunn cook. Yeah. That's not for, like, why are we forcing anything into his movie? Yeah, because it's seeing alone. That's good. Yeah, I mean, I understand it has. It's dealing with ramifications coming out of <laughs> Endgame, like especially the third the third movie. But you know, it's it's not. What happens with the Guardians that has absolutely no effect on Falcon? No. You know what I mean? No, not at all. You know. Where the first movie did have ramifications in a lot of ways. Yeah. So. But, like I said, that was a great series. Yeah. Yeah. And they liked working for Gunn. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, when Disney fired him, they were like, well, I ain't doing shit for you now. Oh, yeah, they were pissed. Yeah. Pissed. But smartest thing DC did was scoop him up. In mm-hmm. my opinion. I agree. That was probably the smartest decision they were going to make. Yeah. Because his Suicide Squad was pretty good. I enjoyed the hell out Like, I'm always amazed. Like, my dad's like, yeah, that second Suicide Squad movie wasn't very good. I'm like, well, what didn't you like about it? And he's like, oh, it got too jokey. And I'm like, okay. Um, I know you've never read any of these comic books. <laughs> you know. They are a little jokey. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're talking about the villains being forced into doing, yeah. you know, and I mean, and on top of all that, Dad, fucking Starro. Yeah. You know, that's all I want to say. Starro. You know, I don't know what else to tell you, but I mean, I like the fact even in uh, that was good in Shazam. Yeah. At the end of Shazam. Yeah. The newest one? You yeah. saw that, right? Yeah. 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 When they came and were trying to get him on squad. 
Yeah. Yeah. He was like, well, why, why would I not join? Yeah. 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 The Justice League? Yeah. No, Society. What the hell is that? Yeah, it's great. Yeah. And he's like, he's not going to join that crap. <laughs> well, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, he's... Why? Well, I, I kind of wonder why they went and tried to get him. I mean, I get why they were trying to get him, but... Well, I mean, like, you... Because, again, like, the thing you have to understand is this is all supposed to tie back into Black, Lin- Black Adam. Yeah. Like, so they introduce us to the Justice Society through Black Adam. Yeah. And so now, like, this is supposed to, like, tie him back to that, which I don't think they're going to do now. Yeah. It's a shame, because I, I really like the Shazam movie. I would like to have, I'd like to, I hope. I mean, I like the newest one. I like the plot. I like, I got whatever it was going. And I, yeah. Like, I, I do hope they find, figure out a way to continue that. Yeah. Because I enjoyed the hell out of it, too. Like, I like both movies a yeah. lot. Yeah. And, <coughs> like, it would be a, 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 a shame to w- kind of watch that franchise die on the vine. But I, I don't think. I don't think James has any interest in continuing it because it's not part of his universe. Yeah. And I don't think it made enough money to like constitute like a third. A third, yeah. I thought it was great. Yeah. It's like, but it's like that odd thing of like. I like the Wonder Woman's cameos too. Oh yeah. I thought that was cool. Yeah. In the Superman cameo. Yeah. That was all good stuff right there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Like, oh, I agree. It was innocent tie-ins. Yeah. Because those were all innocent things that were happening. Oh, right. Sort of. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, sitting in down and having lunch. Yeah. With his milk. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. And like her. That was badass at the end. I was like, damn. Yeah. Yeah. That's good stuff. If it was just written like that, it'd be all right. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. I watched that recently as well. The Shazam, the second Shazam movie? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just good. It was. It was very good. I enjoyed it. I saw it up and I was like, yeah, I'll watch it. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense to me. I want even like the unicorn part too. That was badass. That was, but it made sense. I mean, yeah, I get it. Yeah, you know what I mean. But I like how the unicorns were done. Yeah, vi- visually. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, it was well done. And when they left, when you know things were destroyed, they just turned into a pile of leaves. Yeah, I thought that was cool too. That was. Yeah, there was some good stuff in there. There was. There's a lot of good stuff in that movie. Yeah, I agree. It's impressive. I guess I'm interested in that magic element of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you're now you're dealing with gods and Yeah, I'm all I'm like Yeah man, this is badass. Yeah. You know. There, there is like a lot of interesting like corners like that in the D C universe. Like like much like Marvel. I mean Marvel has their interesting corners as well, but like when you get into D C like like Guillermo del Toro wanted to do a dark justice league. Uh huh. With like Zatanna and um, and like characters like that, like, like like that were like that dealt with the magic side of the DC universe. Yeah, and like he just could never get it off the ground. Really? Yeah, like and he wanted to, and he kept. And DC was like, "Yeah, we're gonna go and do it," and he, it just never gained any traction for whatever reason. But like Guillermo del Toro doing a, a, a dark DC universe, like. Dark Justice League universe style movie with like the magic characters and stuff. I would have been all in on. <coughs> you, you, you know, one thing it would have been a great story, and two, it would have looked badass. Yeah. You know. Yeah, oh, I know. That's a thing. Maybe yeah. I don't give him a shot. Yeah. But I'm interested in that side of it. When they start getting into the dog, I guess that's why I was so disappointed in Thor's. 
I finally got to see him. It was just like, you know what I mean? Like, I expected, for my money, I wanted better. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I don't want to, you know, look at the lightning bolt like this hat. Yeah. Like, I expected better. Like, yeah. at one point, you can even, I think you can see it move. The prop move. Yeah. <laughs> you know I what I mean? you're saying, yeah. yeah. I expected way much, way more better than that. Yeah. Come on now. I get what you're saying, yeah. So, but it, it intrigued me. I like the whole gods thing, and yeah, I get it. Like, I thought that, I thought that aspect was really neat. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Right. And all these, and I like the fact that all these beings and creatures, there was something to that yeah and there was they they believed in a creator of some sort no matter right. what universe they were in right you know what I mean and all these creators you know are in the house of Zeus yeah at this moment you know yeah I like that I thought that was an interesting concept it was a little bit I, mean, I know I'm looking into, into it deeper but right it was a very interesting concept but then you fucking just, you know, poured a pile of shit on the whole thing and it just kind of like yeah. discredited the whole fucking scene. Right. You know what I mean? But at the same time, you get like a, at the end of all that, I mean, you get like Hercules. You know, like, I want to see Hercules because I've got an actor. Yeah. You know, because he, he, he was in a Ted Lasso. He's, he's a great actor. Like, so I'm like, and Hercules is a fun character. In the Marvel Universe. Right. You know, in the comic book. Yeah. Like I, I, maybe maybe Crow's accent needs to go. I don't know what it is. But. I hate to see what Poseidon looks like. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like. I don't know. Anyway. Anyway. Well, I mean, Poseidon would be... Pay more. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah. Pay more. That was really well done. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. That was that was really well done. Yeah. Now who's staying as characters? Great Gatsby's ghost. Who's staying as characters? What do you mean? Is Wonder Woman staying? I don't think anybody is. Really? Yeah. I think you know the second, the second Aquaman movie will be the last one for Momoa. No, really. Yeah. Like I think James Gunn's just you know redoing. It. I mean, he hasn't even talked about an Aquaman movie. Like like their first chapter, as they put it, like outside of Batman and Superman, I mean, there is like very like I well I think like, well, okay like they announced some. It's very interesting <coughs> because, like, they're talking about like Superman is already going to exist in a world with superheroes, okay. and like they they cast some characters. I I know they cast um, Nathan Fillion, who's worked with James Gunn a number of times. Mm. Um, he's going to be Guy Gardner's the Guy Gardner Green Lantern. Okay. And I was kind of surprised that you would even bring in Guy Gardner, Green Lantern, because that guy's a dick. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've never cared for the Guy Gardner, Green Lantern. I've, I've read plenty of books, and he's a dick. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, he always is. Um, another guy, I can't remember his name. He's from the show Barry. They're casting as, as Mephisto, which is an interesting character. Because he he was he has like the powers to like transmutate into elements, mm. which is kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was a, a I can't remember who the, th- the third there was a woman that is a hot girl. They're casting somebody as hot girl. So like that's in Superman Legacy. So like they're already kind of like. They're doing like a, a strange show, like kind of like building the universe as if it already exists instead of starting from square one. Like, like with the Marvel movies, like Iron Man is 
square one. Yeah. You know, like these char- none of these characters really did exist. Right. You know, so it's kind of interesting. That it's going to be like, no, nah, they've already been around. So Pattinson's in. No, I, I that Batman is outside of this. Oh, it is. Yeah. Oh, okay. But he likes it then. Well, I I think it's just as a situation where, <coughs> like with the Joker movie, like that Warner Brothers is saying this made money and people liked it, so we want to keep it. But we understand you want to make a Batman movie too, so we're going to let you just go ahead and do that. Yeah. Outside of that, because I again, like I I, I just I, I'm. It's an odd thing of like, I don't believe Robert Pattinson's Batman could exist in a world with other superheroes. Okay. Like, it's so grounded in reality. Yeah. In how he's portrayed and the equipment's portrayed and everything else that I just don't feel like. Like, much like the, the Nolan. Um, Batman, like it, it, you, you couldn't have him exist in a world with Superman, Superman. and yeah. Wonder Woman and Green Lantern and Aquaman. Like it just it doesn't work for that character. Yeah, it doesn't work for the world. Yeah. I feel the same way about Robert Pattinson's Batman. It's just it's it's too grounded in reality that you for you to like sit there and say, oh by the way, here's Superman. Yeah, you know, like, I just don't like it. Just doesn't work. Plus, also, like, the, suit, the the Batman that they're using is going to be an older Batman because, like, that that movie has Damian Wayne in it. Superman's son, or Batman's son. Uh-huh. So, you can't have, like, a a younger Batman. He's got to be an older guy. Yeah. So. I just hope like that also gives me an op- like an opportunity to get like a a Nightwing Dick Grayson. Yeah. Yeah. Like Dick Grayson is one of my favorite characters because like he's raised by Batman, and like he's not Batman. He's like the opposite of Batman. <laughs> like he he has like a positive outlook, and he's always like you know he's chipper and he's cracking jokes where you know. Batman is like stoic. Yeah. You know. And even when like Dick had to put on the the suit, like there was a time where like he took over the mantle of Batman. Much to Damian Wayne's chagrin. Mm. He had a hard time with it because he couldn't be him. He had to be Bruce. Yeah. You know, and he's like, I can't like this is the hardest thing in the world to do because I'm not that guy. Yeah, yeah. You know. Where Damian Wayne you know, he, he may be 12, but, like, he spent the first 12 years being trained by the League of Shadows. You know? Yeah. And he's also Bruce Wayne's son, so he's also got a bit of a personality <coughs> problem. You know? Yeah. Like, he fit would fit that perfectly. Yeah. You know? But... I don't know. It's going to be very interesting. I, I, I'm, I'm very intrigued by what Guns proposed and and everything else. So... Yeah. All right. Real quick. Yeah. How about the shots of uh, Deadpool? It's very interesting. I'm talking about the Wolverine suit. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Pretty interesting. I, I like it. Like I, I like it. It's the yellow and blue suit. Yeah. Like I the the only thing I wished was he had on the headpiece. It I'm, doesn't really make sense. It's it, it looks good drawn. Like but. I understand why you don't put it on him. I mean, it's it's you fucking Jackman. You don't cover that money maker. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, like I just want to see him one time with the mask. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like to me, like I would be like the ultimate. <laughs> like it just works to me. Yeah. No, I know. It takes you back to this that comic. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but. I thought the, the I thought the suit looked good. Or, but even be better is if you put the mask on with white eyes. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
like some kind of something to protect his face. Yeah, lenses. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. That would be. Because you can animate. I mean, they've proven with Deadpool, you can animate that. Yeah. You know, they do it very, very well. I mean, it works with Spider Man, too. Yeah. Like, the funny thing is, like, with, with Deadpool, like, it's like, I don't need, a, like, a logical explanation for, like, anything. why the lenses move. Anything. Anything. No. You don't need any kind of logical explanation. No. But, like, there's so many, like, I, I heard, like, Jennifer Gardner's going to be in this as Electra. Yeah. Like, I mean, clearly, like, what, whatever this is, is multiverse bending. Sure. You know? To, and at the end of it, Marvel just, or Deadpool just ends up in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah. It's going to be, like... Whatever his wackadoo journey is to get to there, right, right. No, yeah, I agree. But I think it's cool that Gardner's in it. I do too. I mean, like, it was a shit movie. It was. But I th- also think it's pretty cool that Reynolds came out there and said, "Hey, you want to you want right. to reprise this role for me?" You know what I mean? It was. That's all Reynolds. Right. It would honestly be the equivalent of Ryan Reynolds doing a cameo as Green Lantern in a Justice League movie. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, okay, yeah. Yeah. But, like, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just intrigued to see, like, how this... Like, is there something to Deadpool that, like, allows him to end up traveling through the multiverse? And it becomes, like, a road movie? Like it, it's like Harold and Kamar go to White Castle. Only it's Deadpool traveling through the multiverse. Yeah, right. So like he stops it. You know, he has a fight with Hugh Jackman's Wolverine, and you know, and then he bumps into Elektra and you know, whoever else. Like I mean, you know, like well, all the other cast are in it too, right? I don't know. I think Colossus is in it, and Megazonic Teenage War. Uh, she's in it, right? But like, how much are they in it? Because again, like what, like, <coughs> or is it a team up with him and Reynolds? Um, I don't know. I don't think Hugh Jackman would have done it for a cameo. Right, I think he's got to be in it. I don't know. I, I, I'm very intrigued by the whole thing. Like the whole thing just intrigues me to no, obviously to no end. <laughs> because like the first two movies are so fucking good. Yeah. And is there going to be a Spider-Man cameo? Yeah. Oh. There has to be. There has to be. Because it's pretty much him. Yeah. That's... You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, have him crushing on, like, Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man would be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and Reynolds, Reynolds is kind of a nerd about this shit, so... He is, yeah. So, he'll, he'll figure it out. I also just appreciate the fact that, like, he's, like, very protective of the character. Yeah. Like it's it, it's very interesting. Like like he he is. Like he's not going to do it unless it's. Right. Right. You know what I mean? Like that's, I find that very interesting about him, because like. I can see him just like looking at it as another payday. And he's not. No, he's it's paying. it's like a passion project for him. Yeah. And you don't get that very much. And, like, when you do, I don't want to say the results are usually spectacular. I think that's what we got with Endgame. Those guys love that shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, the Russo brothers are... Yeah. Like, I mean, they're nerdy enough that they want to do Secret War. <coughs> I know. You know. And that's, but with, you know, with Reynolds... I'm glad he's they, I'm glad he's that way with the character. Yeah, because I think he would have been wasted by Fox. Yeah, well, he was. Yeah, well, yeah, he was. But like, really wasted if they went this route. Yeah. And and like, I'm glad he's that invested. Yeah. With him. And I'm glad Disney was like, yeah, go ahead and do what you want. Yeah. As long as you get got to tie in a couple things here, but other than that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like dealing with the multiverse and stuff like that. Yeah. But. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't know about... I mean, the fourth wall works in a Deadpool movie. It does. I mean, it does. It, he made it work. He, he made it work. Yeah. But 
you just can't. I don't know. You can't be going against a fucking. I mean, you go all the way back to that leaked test footage. That I mean, and that worked so fucking well, <laughs> you know. And it's just that thing of like, like him breaking the fourth wall. It's like that odd thing. Like it, it, it you're right. It does work. It works one hundred percent with that character. That's the only character that could probably do it. Yeah. You know, but. They tried to do it with She-Hulk and just came across dumb. It did. It really did. I hate that. Yeah. Because there are aspects of that show that I liked. Yeah. And like, man, that ending was just awful. Yeah. I'm sorry. Like, I appreciate they went they went for something different. I really do. But, man, that was bad. Yeah. Yeah. But, I'm just, I'm excited for Deadpool. Yeah. I am too. <laughs> yeah. I just want to see it. Yeah, he's really... Because <clears throat> as you remember, when the comics were coming out, Deadpool was very popular. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, th- there was a moment in time where it was like... He was getting up there. Yeah, like, he was like... like that, There was a moment in time where Wolverine was the most used character by Marvel Comics. He was in everything. Yeah. Because everybody loved Wolverine. Mm-hmm. And then... All of a sudden it was Deadpool was that guy. Yeah. Deadpool was in everything in the comics. Yeah. Like, you, you know, you couldn't turn your head without, you know, there being a Deadpool reference or something. So, it's like that weird thing of like... Like, Deadpool became like the new Wolverine. Yeah. In a lot of ways. <coughs> yeah, he kind of took that mantle. Yeah. And it's like outside of a Spider-Man comic book, like Deadpool's the next sell- best-selling character. Yeah, I mean, there was. I mean, you know how many Spider-Man comics were released? Yeah, it was like saturated. But but they sell. It's like it's like that odd thing of like when you look at like comic book sales. It's like Batman, Spider-Man. Deadpool. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, no, but like, so it's like that odd thing of like, wow, these are like, like, what did all, what do these three get? Well, I mean, you know, Batman's Batman. Yeah. And Deadpool's the, the ultimate anti hero, <laughs> you know. And Spider Man is just completely different from both of them. Yeah. It was just a well done. The movies were really well done. Yeah. I mean, bravo to Reynolds. You know what I mean? But, yeah. And the love story was good. Like, and it wasn't a dumb love story. Like, I just hate it when you get these movies and it's, all right, there's the chick. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's the love story and we got to do this. And then go into the bedroom, then fade out because it's, P, you know, P, you yeah. know, these are popular actors. And now it's, you know, they're doing this, and they break up, and then they get back together at the end. Yeah. You know, and meanwhile, there's this, like, gigantic fucking yeah. movie going on around that. You right. know what I mean? This was integrated very well. Yeah. I mean, when she died, you felt it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you felt it. You were like, oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Because I in the movie, I, I remember watching it, I was like, oh, fuck, no. Yeah. No way. I was saying that out loud. Yeah. You know? It's a great scene. Yeah. And that car scene in the first Deadpool was amazing. Oh, yeah. It was like, I'm a, like a lot of these scenes that he does is very, uh, what is it, Wachowski. Yeah. Like, like. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The use of slow motion. Yeah. And the way the camera moves in slow motion. Watching the knives and the bullet. Yeah. And, him doing something stupid, but even like, like when, as the camera moves, you see a re, like you'll see like a reflection, and there, you know, the reflection is important, and then the camera moves around. It, it, it's so well done. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Like, in, like very white chalky, right? Like you're you're right. Yeah, it's just very good. Yeah, it's entertaining to watch. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, and funny and fucking dirty as fuck. Yeah. 
and the fact that they released a PG-13 with Fred Savage. Oh, yeah. Come on, now. Yeah. The never ending story, come on. Dude. I just love this, like, you know, when are you put Winnie the Pooh, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was great. I mean, yeah. like, the PG-13 was just as funny as the fucking first one. Yeah. This is great, dude. The fucking spike through the head. Yeah. Ah, oh, so good. Yeah, I, I'm interested to see what his connection is with the multiverse on how he can travel through. Yeah. Something there. Right. There has to be. There's something that he can go onto that other plane. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. What would be phenomenal is once he gets to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, once he gets to that reality, when he swears, it's bleeped out. Yeah. Like, that would be like, and like, only he knows fuck? it's been bleeped out. Yeah, yeah. Like, he's like, what the, you know, that would be tremendous to me. Because <laughs> that's the only way you can do it. Yeah. You know, and he has to be like, I can't believe I'm being censored like this. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, but that's the funny thing about it. He's not censored in his movies. Right. And that's what I don't want. I don't want a PG-13. Right. I, I'm not saying you should get a PG-13 version of, of Deadpool, but at the same time... Like, when he shows up in a Spider-Man movie, you can't make the Spider-Man movie R. I know. That's the problem. So, like, you let him be dirty, but you have to bleep out all the dirty stuff. I mean, I think I think he can pull it off. Though. Yeah. But. I think so, too. But, like I said, I mean, that's the thing. Like, it has to be, like, that has to become the running joke is every time he drops, it, you know, he swears, it just gets bleeped out. <laughs> like, and there's, like, an, even, like, a... A censored thing that goes across his face, and you just see him like getting pissed off about it. Her rolling his eyes up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he ha- there has to be a Spider-Man connection. We'll see. We will see. That's for sure. Now, before we go. Um, So, Thad wants to know if we're going to come to his house for a barbecue. What days are good for you? We'll, we'll get to you on that, Thad. Um, Tim writes in, I'm on Season 3, Episode 6 of Mandalorian. I may have skipped it during recaps for spoilers, but can a, a conversation we had as to what the fuck is wrong with Katie Sackhoff's face? Her fucking face looks like she got stung by a hive of bees that were allergic to bees. I'll hang up and listen to your answer. I will say this, my friend, as a Katie Sackhoff aficionado, I think she's had plastic surgery. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, if you go back and you look at her in Battlestar Galactica, and I mean, that was... She's 43 right now. Battlestar Galactica wrapped up in 2010. (coughs) So, she was 30 when that wrapped If you look at her face then and now, I mean, I think it's clear that she's had some form of plastic surgery. Yeah. And uh, I think it's unfortunate. I I do agree it doesn't look that great, but she still holds my heart. (laughs) So I can't badmouth her, but I I do think she has had some some work done. (laughs) Agreed. Agreed. Is there anything you'd like to add to the proceedings there, sir? No, man, I'm good. Well, remember, there are a number of different ways you can reach out and touch us. Uh, you can send us an email, like uh, Thad and Tim did. And an email address is pittsburghnerd at yahoo.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, or Mastodon. Uh, just search Pittsburgh Nerd Podcast. We're very, very easy to find. And we are on also a number of podcasting networks. You can find us on the Tangent Bound Network, the Weeby Geeks Network, and the Pod Breed Network. Uh, just give them a Google search, and you'll find all the other great podcasts they have to offer. And lastly, as always, I want to thank you, dear listener, for checking us out each and every week. We can't thank you enough for your support. Um, 
be a friend, tell a friend. Yeah. And so on that note, the dreamer has awakened. Peace.